Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Zach Has No Idea How to Start These Things. I watched Antebellum. This movie, uh, Antebellum, directed by Gerard Bush and Christopher Renz, starring Janelle Monet, uh, the artist. I really like her music. Big fan. This movie has been advertised as from the producers of Get Out and Us. And you immediately think, oh, it's Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele has nothing to do with Antebellum, which is like the big selling point of the, this movie and the trailers. And again, COVID happened. It was supposed to come out, got, kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And so it's finally out. And they tried. I have to go into spoilers for this movie. Janelle Monet is, she's a modern day woman who wakes up and all of a sudden she's in the antebellum South as a slave and has no idea what she's doing there. Kind of like a, did I just time travel type thing? The first like 30 minutes of this movie is straight up like Saw if it was about slavery. It is violent, brutal, it's hard to watch. Trigger warning, there is rape in this movie. There's gore, there's torture. And again, like the opening, the first 30 minutes. So if you don't make it past those 30 minutes, I'm just, I'm just warning you, it's hard to watch. You feel like all hope is lost because it's, it's dealing with slavery, which is a horrible thing. But Janelle Monet's performance is fantastic. She is great in this movie. Unfortunately, because of how the rest of the movie pans out, her performance is probably not going to be looked at during the Oscar season. Or who knows? It could because there's not a lot of movies that came out this year, but she's fantastic in this movie. She is absolutely the best part. If you're a fan of hers and you can withstand the actual torture of this movie, go for it. I have to go into spoilers. I'm sorry. The twist of this movie is absolutely bonkers. They're not time travelers. She was kidnapped and then forced into actual slavery on a Civil War reenactment park. So this whole, this whole movie takes place behind the scenes of a Civil War reenactment like area, like park. The filmmakers are clearly trying to suggest that Civil War reenactments and monuments and stuff like that are wrong. It's, we're, celebrating the wrong parts of history. I get what they're trying to say. They fumble it so hard. Like this is one of those movies where you hear the idea, you're like, oh, I guess that would be kind of cool if they handle it well. They don't. The filmmakers handle this super hard topic like a child holds a Wii remote, just flinging it all around, just slapping us in the face with all these horrible images. This movie is super divisive because of that reason. On top of, it's just hard to watch. It's not a good horror, horror movie. It's not a good thriller. This whole movie can be summed up as you've, you've withstood, withstanded, withstood. You've dealt with all of this horrible imagery and themes about slavery and straight up torture. And then they slap on, oh, hey, by the way, here's what we think about Civil War reenactments in Confederate monuments. This is how subtle it is. One of the villains dies by slamming into the Confederate monument of Robert E. Lee. You get it? I get what the filmmakers were trying to do, but man, like, have some subtlety. This is like a five. This, it, I just don't want to ever watch this movie again because it's not good. I just get nothing out of, I get no emotion other than anger and disgust for 90 minutes. And with like all these actors that are either super evil or completely emotionless and powerless. I just don't want to watch that again.